I haven't even thought about this in a million years, but you were talking about, Aubrey, about people that uh, don't seem to care or don't have uh, the uh, enthusiasm for something. Wonder and awe in the world, yeah. I can remember that I used to be, for years, I struggled like that, where I was bored with things. I was bored with myself. I, I, I was beating my brains out saying, why don't I love something? What, what's, what is missing? Right. And I, my, sort of my conclusion was that I really did have tremendous ambition and tremendous aspiration, but I had buried it under layers of fear you know, as if if I would ever admit to myself that I wanted to be excellent at something, that that would be more than I could I could take. Failure would be more than I could take. And so when I finally sort of admitted to myself, and actually it's in the authentic swing, I think, or maybe it's not. Mm-hmm. But when I admitted to myself that I did have ambition, I did want to do something, suddenly everything changed. And then enthusiasm did come, but it was fear so I, th- I think when, we, when we're running into people that are not, don't have enthusiasm, don't have that fire, I don't believe it's not there. I think it's buried under fear. And I think, uh, I think that's why great teachers, coaches, will put a young person in a position where they can, they can exceed their expectations or their belief about themselves, where they thought they couldn't do it, and then the guy kicks them in the ass enough time they actually do it, and they go, wow, how did that happen? You know, And then that's the spark that can then burst into flame if it's, if it's guided properly. And I see, I see that everywhere, I'm sorry to say, you know, in this country, it's everywhere. Well, I'm glad that you brought up that it was you at one point and you you passed it because one of the really important things about your book, I think, is that you your really objective assessment assessment of your own life at one point in time when you were like forty years old. You know, you were talking about this. That was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, this script that wasn't you know, working, and you know, you know, you know, you were like, "What the fuck am I doing?" And then, how did you go from that? to completely getting it together, enough to write these books about getting it together, yeah, how to get you, it how'd together. How'd you get over that fear? Uh, I think at that time, you mean the fear that I was just talking about? Yeah, well, the same thing, same I, question. Yeah, how, I did think, you, how did you figure it out? I think once I realized that, I, that there was something I wanted, that I wanted to be a writer, which I had refused to admit to myself because I was so afraid of failing at it, mm. Then I just sort of said, well, you know, there was a moment, it's actually in the War of Art, where I just sort of realized the way you get there is one step at a time. You know, like an alcoholic, you know, one, one day at a time. And that it was a, a, a process that could be demystified. It wasn't airy-fairy waiting for inspiration. It was just sit the fuck down, put a piece of paper in a typewriter, and start you know, and then do that the next day and do it the next day. And when, and the other aspect for me was I had no choice that anytime I would try to stop and try to sell out, I was like so depressed that I, that, so I just had no choice to just keep going, going, going. But it was before I wrote the war of art, I probably been, had been writing for at least 30 years or at least trying to do that. That book came out in about two months just because it was so clear in my mind that that's what I had been fighting all all these years. Did you find that putting it down on paper helped you? Very much, because it became very clear to me. Like a you law know? almost. Yeah. I mean, for me, you know, it's like 